So are you screwing it down to in to mark the inlet? Yeah, again, yeah. Okay. I got a couple things that didn't didn't quite line up the original inlet mark, so yeah, I'm just kind of trying to figure out where I went wrong. Basically, I should have blacked it too, but I didn't. So. Hear that camera get close to it. Is that just a really fine point? Okay. Yeah, if you look at it, it's got kind of a almost a spear point on it. Okay. So you can get in places you don't think you can. It doesn't look like it might go, but it does actually fit in there. Like little corners like that, mm -hmm. you can go in and. I'm going to pull that off and black it and probably put it back on see what I've got going on. And this one over here went in just a touch too deep. And I don't really want to take my wood down that much. Hmm. So I'm going to put a piece of paper on the back of it. Oh. I'll just bring it back up. Okay. And then file it in. That's clever. You just glue that on? Glue the paper on? Contact cement a piece of paper on the back and then that'll just jack that up a little bit. That's cheeky. Yeah. Well, I should have put the patch box in before I got so far on the stock, but I got into working on the stock, kind of got ahead of myself, so, you know, it is what it is. And do you just use normal inletting black, or do you have a special? I'll show you my special secret formula. I don't have a candle going, so I'm going to cheat it. That's my secret formula. <laughs> so what I've got going on here, just so you know, and you can kind of see it. Yeah, help me understand this. So... We've got the patch, <laughs> get these chips out of here. So this is the, the door of the patch box. Okay, and this part's already in line. So this box lid lays down in here, and it's but it's a different thickness metal than these sides, because I didn't want to try to make that lid out of something this heavy. So I left, I'm gonna leave a little wood edge in here for my lid to get to lay on. When the box is closed. Okay. Okay. It's going to take just a little bit of tweaking here to get all this to work. But right now i got just a little bit of interference right here. A couple little things that are not working. But anyway. So when this is all done, that, that lid will lay in there between these two brass side pieces. And that's why I have that line there. Because that's that side piece. And then I'm jumping it up. The lid's going to lay. I'm going to leave a little eighth inch ledge around there and then I'll mortise my box out. So, a million ways to do this. That's the way this was ending up. I, I don't know. I could do it different. But that's how I'm doing it. So, so I'm just going to stick this back on here. A couple screws back in it. These screws that I'm using right now, these are all sacrificial. They're just assembly screws, is what I call them. Your final screws will be nice. Yes. Yeah, they won't be in and out of here a hundred times and beat up and things. It'll all be uh, steel screws with uh, fire blued heads. That's how I'll do all the screws. Why not brass screws on the brass patch box? Because I like the look of the steel screws. The original box had steel screws, and I, I okay. like that look. Uh, of steel screws on a brass box so since it's my gun I get to do what I want and this gets kind of hairy because you got a lot of fragile corners in here with all this curly work curvy work I should say the Rococo type design there so you got a lot of like that little point right there just is waiting for you to chip it off. So you just really don't want to do that if you don't have to. And you can see it's it's hard to get a bottom that's at mm -hmm. all level and everything about it's just kind of a headache. It's yeah, just, just the green like here is just nuts. Oh yeah, it's How just it's torn. Every one of those shiny lines wants to do that tear out. That's where it goes like mm -hmm. that. 
And so every one of those wants to come out of there. And it just makes it a really good time to try and... So what do you do to combat that? Is it just patience and sharp patience tools? Patience and really sharp tools. Yeah, okay. that's really your only... Your only... Ideally, if I could get this to where it lays in here nice, then I can um, get my depth set. But I got to get this laying in here nicer than it currently is. Yeah, it's getting a little better now. Slow and steady. Yeah, it's just really slow. And I'll do that a lot of times, grab a scraper up on the edge and just take off a little bit. Yeah. It looks like it could tear out if you're not careful though. Yeah, all kinds of things can happen. This is just really testy wood to work. But if you want a pretty gun, pretty much. Yeah, it's the price you pay. Yeah. It's working some really, really funky wood. A lot of guys will say they don't like working walnut because it'll chip and do things. But. I've seen curly maple do the same thing. The walnut, to me, is a lot easier to work. Keep sense of humor when things go wrong, you'll be all right. At least I glued it on the right side. Is this going to work? I don't know. I'll know a lot more. I get clamped down in here. Oh, it feels pretty good right there. My goal is to get this to where the brass are just a touch proud of the wood. Just touch it on there and get it in. It's not quite as tight as I would have liked it on its inletting, but it's hard to get everything perfect. So you didn't want to remove more wood because of your butt plate or just aesthetically? Just it was it's kind of where I want it. And I didn't I like I said, I should have put this in just a little earlier than I did. But when I get going in one direction, I tend to keep going there, and when a lot of times I shouldn't. And I kind of got going on the stock, and I should have actually been going on the the patch box more. Would have made more sense, but it's neither here nor there. And like this file, it's not really all that handy for what I'm doing here. But that little piece of tape on the end, if you're working on uh, some things where you don't want the edge of your end of your file scratching things, putting a piece of tape around it, like when you're doing something on a barrel or something, having that tape on there will keep you from getting into something you don't want to get into. Find, there are two or three files around here that have tape on them, and that's they're files that do things that... I use around stuff. It so is this filing here just getting kind of a final fit and yes. finish on it? Yeah. It's getting this brass down to this wood so everything matches up perfect. And then once everything's matched up perfect, then take that screw off too.
then these can be cleaned up and engraved and dropped back on and the gun's done and they're good to go. Like everything else, you just don't want to go crazy on something and go after it too much. You want to be gentle and work things down. So see when that rotates, how the lid sticks down into the wood, mm -hmm. okay? So when it's here, that's flush. But when that lid opens, things come out. And I don't want to file that away because that makes my hinge look nice. So I'm going to relieve wood on the inside. That's how I'm going to take care of that problem. That's what I'm calculating on at the moment. I've got a groove in there, but I don't know that I've got it. I don't think I have enough of a groove in there. That's what I'm thinking right now. You don't have enough of a groove for it to open. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, and I don't know. I don't know. It seems to be happy. Maybe I'm okay. Well, I'm going to put my screws in and see what I got. And see, the lid fits between these two guys. Got to kind of break the edges on the lid's got a little. I ain't going to get out of it, so I ain't going to worry too much about it. But so now we got to trim everything up. Finish. I got to pull this back off and tuck those ears in a little bit on that dogwood branch, and then finish filing this in. Then everybody should be pretty much where they belong. As best I can tell. So, oops. 